Hi there. Wow. Um, my name is Amanda Little, and I am a petroleum addicted environmentalist. Um, I'm going to make a confession to you today in the form of a list. It's a partial list of the things that my family, which includes my husband, me, and, and our two kids, have consumed uh, in the last seven days um, that are somehow made by or rely on petrochemicals. Um, and and it's, a, it's quite a long list, but, um, but <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to just read, read a few, a few uh, items. Uh, four 30-gallon plastic trash bags made, by, made of polyethylene, nine gallons of gasoline used by two cars, 32 gallons of jet fuel used for air travel, 56 diapers made with superabsorbent poly polymers, 47 light bulbs, each burning for at least an hour a day, 17 cycles of washer-dryer, 10 dishwasher cycles, 7 hours of oven use, 32 hours of uh, music stereo, 3 hours of mechanical baby swing, 2.3 hours of soothing vibration bouncy chair, 6 capsules of extra-strength Tylenol, 21 hours of cable TV on a 46-inch HD flat-screen television, um, 7 hours, uh, 117 hours, rather, of uh, family iPhone and iPad use, 126 hours of laptop use, 1,000-plus gallons of water delivered to our house through electrical pump. Um, you get the idea. I could, I could literally name hundreds, if not thousands, of these items that we use every day. And, I mean, effectively, all medicines, cosmetics, plastics, polymers, paints, glues, dyes, any synthetic chemical is essentially uh, produced by petrochemicals. Um, all the functions of my home are powered by electricity, and all products that we use are delivered to our homes and our stores um, via, uh, you know, trucks, trains, ships, and airplanes. So um, take a look at my desk. There's, there's virtually nothing on here uh, including the organic banana and the eco-friendly coffee cup and the green plant that isn't some, doesn't have some connection to fossil fuels. And outside of this frame, you'd probably see, you know, a PVC yoga mat and, um, and you know, a pair of Lycra yoga pants that were also derived from petrochemicals. So there's really nothing that's sacred in a sense. I mean, everything has some connection um, to, to fossil fuels. And Let's just go back to this first slide. I don't. Um, there's a reason why I, I convey my, you know, my relationship to petroleum as a kind of steamy romance. And this 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 image is actually modeled after um, a Casablanca poster. Um, but the idea is that you know we're more intimate on a certain level. We're more intimate with petroleum and its byproducts than we are. We touch, we hold, we engage with them, um, even without knowing it, more than we do with you know, our husbands and our families and our friends. Um, I mean, how many of you out there um, have touched a plastic steering wheel, plastic bottles, and plastic pens more than you've held the hand of your lover? Um, it's just uh, you know, almost an essential. It's a foregone conclusion. We're all in it. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I'm an environmentalist who has certain fond feelings for the petroleum industry. You know, I'll admit that aside from the, you know, soothing vibration bouncy seat, um, three other of the, pro the, the, the items in my household that bring more joy to my family are, you know, silicon pacifiers for my baby, flashing LED vinyl sneakers for my toddler, and, um, you know, and some Dora the Explorer Band-Aids. I mean, truly, we get more, we get more enjoyment out of those things. And, and, I, and I'm indebted to the petroleum industry um, for, the, for, the, for that reason. But we all should be indebted to the petroleum industry on a certain level. Um, and this is what I call the energy wheel, energy built the American superpower. It um, gave rise cheap oil, coal, and natural gas, gave rise to virtually all the industries over the 20th century that made us a great and powerful nation. So it gave rise to our military, our electricity industry, transportation, plastics, our cities, homes, computing, our food and water, our pharmaceuticals. None of this would be possible without cheap fossil fuels. Um, in fact, it's, it's magnificent, it's almost miraculous that we found so many uses for, for these fuels. The problem is actually we've gotten so good at using them that we've developed an appetite for 
uh, petroleum that's, that's far greater than any of our other allies and competitors. So um, take a look at this. This shows average annual oil consumption per capita in the US compared to some nations in Western Europe and Japan. Obviously very you know, modern, technologically savvy nations. We're using roughly 22 barrels per person per year. Um, uh, by comparison, the people of France are using about 10, and, and the UK roughly the same, Japan about 13. So we're using more than double the amount of electricity. Thank you. <laughs> Is it? Um, so we're using more than double the amount of electricity of uh, the people of Western Europe and about 75% more than the people of Japan. Um, let, let's compare that to a similar consumption pattern. We all know that we have a, a, a pretty significant, we love food in the US, right? Um, and, I'm sorry, we love, <laughs> this is so binding, I just, kids in there. Um, so we love food in the U.S., but, 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 but look, compare, compare our food intake, our daily energy, uh, I mean, our daily calorie intake, roughly. Um, these are U.N. numbers. Um, in the U.S., it's about 3,800 uh, calories. In France, it's about 12% uh, less than that. Um, the U.K., roughly the same. Japan, we're eating maybe 25 30% more. But we're really not consuming that many more food calories per day. So look at these two slides together. Comparing um, our average uh, per capita food intake to our average per capita oil consumption. And what, what these two slides show me is that we have an energy obesity crisis that's many times more severe than our food obesity crisis. And yet we don't, we don't think about it. We, you know, we, we don't know it. And uh, we'll get to that in a bit. But why did, how did we get here? Well, 70% of, of, of the people in the U.S., and I, I am among them, drive to work alone in a car. Look at our public transit use compared to other nations. So 60, this is a National Geographic, um, uh, these are National Geographic numbers, 61% of us never use public transit compared to 2% of, of the Chinese who never use public transit. Now China is aggressively putting cars on the road, but it's also aggressively investing in public transit. Look at, look at our, home, our home energy consumption. The average four-person home in the U.S. is using about 11,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. That's, two, that's twice, almost three times more than the average four-person home in Japan. Um, there are many, many other examples of this, but if you look at the total energy use in the, in the U.S. Um, based on uh, dollar uh, uh, GDP, um, based on basically equivalent, um, Japan's economy is twice as efficient as the U.S. economy. Um, sorry, it's per dollar of GDP. Thank you for your patience with that. <laughs> but essentially, we have an economy that's, that's grossly inefficient. Um, and and we're, we're dealing with this problem, right, of, of energy obesity. <laughs> we're dealing with this problem of energy obesity. And, um, and, and what I... You know, what I struggle with is why don't we know this? Why aren't we engaged with this? Why is it that we know so much more about food obesity in this country and so little about energy obesity country in this country? And I think um, we, we, we have an illusion in a sense that we can live energy lavish lifestyles without any negative effects. And, um, and this illusion, I think, stems from a measurement problem. Um, we, we, we have come to expect um, energy, I mean, f nutrition labels on our food um, that show calorie and fat intake. Um, but we, we have no way of knowing how much energy goes in to our products and the, you know, the services that propel our daily activities. Um, so what if we were to have a measurement system that was based on the nutrition label system that would enable us to expose and identify this problem? And you know, the old business adage is, you can't manage what you don't measure. And I think in this case, that's exactly where we are. Once we start labeling and identifying our energy use, we might be able to um, uh, improve and secure our, our national economy. So look at this. This is, this is a concept that I've been playing with. Um, 
imagine if we had a, a, a labeling system that would show, that would enable us to compare, for instance, two otherwise identical pieces of steak and show which, which piece of steak, which was local and grass-fed, um, and, and which piece of steak was uh, from corn-fed beef shipped in from Argentina. They have very, two very different energy footprints, um, these, these particular um, products, but we have no way of, of, of being smart consumers and thinking about how we buy them. So um, this would be, I like to call the system DECAL, uh, our daily energy calorie system. And it would enable us to compare products and track our, our daily energy use. But let's, let's take it one step further. Um, this, what if we had an, I, an, an uh, iPhone app that could track energy use throughout our entire lives, not just food products, but it could track the energy that we use to live, to move, to buy products of all kinds, and to eat. Um, you know, it sounds like this might be way far-fetched, but um, in, in the UK, there's a company called Tesco that's kind of like the Walmart of the UK, and they've already begun a carbon labeling system that um, looks at the, the energy inputs and the greenhouse gases that come out of the use, the production, and the delivery of all the products in their store. And they've actually started with products ranging from tater tots to toaster ovens. And they're looking at this across the board. Um, and, and they've begun to roll it out. Now, a carbon labeling system wouldn't work in the US because we're still um, mired in this, this debate around climate change. But we could get around that by just looking at energy, because we all agree that we're spending tons and tons on energy, that it's making our nation less secure, um, and, and, and that we have, when the price of energy goes up, um, either from some kind of political crisis or because of scarcity, um, we'll be prepared and we'll be able to respond as consumers. So let's, let's dive into some specifics of this application. Um, it would enable us, to look, you could take your iPhone and scan a barcode on a product, or an item on a menu, a hamburger on a menu, an ear of corn, avocados that have been imported from Chile, or um, bananas imported from Honduras, um, you know, imported coffee from Zimbabwe, um, uh, sodas that are filled with, um, you know, corn syrup and other very petrochemically intensive foods, um, imported wine, and so forth. So you could, at a glance, this app could help you understand and act as a smart consumer, help you understand where in your food diet you're consuming the most energy. Likewise, it could um, sync up to onboard computers in planes, uh, cars, buses, trains, and so forth. Um, so you could have a way of monitoring how you're using energy in your commutes and your daily errands. And it would, again, enable you at a glance to say, oh, this past week or this past, this day or month, um, I, was, I was using, as I found out, 32 gallons of jet fuel compared to nine gallons of petroleum um, for you know, my family's daily energy intake. It would help you understand these, re these different um, inputs relative to one another. Um, similarly, the way we live. We could, we could have an app that would uh, uh, sync up to a smart um, system in the home that monitors how um, electricity is used um, by our thermostats and our lighting, um, our laundry, our laptops, um, our uh, you know, flat screen televisions, um, our refrigerators and so forth. And it would help us create efficiencies in our home and it would help us become aware, oh my gosh, you know, my microwave is dramatically more efficient than um, uh, you know, my oven, for instance. Um, or if I turn my thermostat down one or two degrees, uh, I will, you know, save this amount of money or energy. Um, likewise, what, with what we buy, you know, our diapers, um, our pres prescription drugs, the, the, the prescription drug industry is almost entirely petrochemicals. It would help us understand and compare all these different um, uh, items in our life. And so when you check out of Amazon or you check out of Target, you can actually get some kind of a read, not just the total cost of your purchases, but the total energy cost of your purchases. So here's where it gets really fun. The, the decal score, this app could generate some kind of score. It could tell you um, what your total energy diet is for that day, or for that week, or for that month. 
Um, and it could put you on a scale of sort of one to a hundred, where you register relative to other Americans as in terms of your energy consumption. So, you know, just as we know that we're in the X percentile of weight or height, X percentile of weight or height, um, we also could know, um, uh, for instance, I might be in the 93rd percentile of energy consumers on a day where I'd taken a big flight or something. Um, it, all, it will show you when you surpass um, a target that you have made for yourself um, in terms of, you know, all the things you're using to move, live, eat, and buy. Um, and, and even you could have the Department of Energy issue some kind of recommended daily allowance of uh, energy calories. Um, you could have um, the IRS offer uh, tax credits to families that are reducing their total energy intake. You could even have personal trainers, personal energy trainers, who you know, teach you how to be more energy efficient. And I, I, I can already imagine some kind of a show that's the biggest loser for energy. <laughs> you know, we can all compete to become more efficient, smarter, to save money, and again, create better security. The problem is that as consumers, we don't have, we're not empowered in that way. And, and, and we all want to participate, but we don't know how. Um, and, and I'd like to end with this notion that this, this app would enable us to be all confessors, right? It would enable us to understand um, what our, our role is in the energy economy, to, to name um, you know, our energy usage. Um, it would also inspire producers to create more efficient, more innovative products. Um, when, when, uh, when food manufacturers were required to publish their trans fats um, and their saturated fats, they, were, um, they, they actually reformulated 90%, 95% of their products to use healthier fats. So it would put a lot of pressure on the system to improve. Um, but above all, I think what it could do is create a sort of a shift of consciousness um, by confessing the way we use energy, by kind of understanding the contours of our energy use, um, we could also become um, sort of liberated from it. And, and I think about this passage at the end of, uh, of Crime and Punishment uh, by Dostoevsky, and, 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 and you know, the, the character Raskolnikov commits this crime of murder in the beginning of the book. He spends 300 pages sort of running away from it. And at the end of the book, he confesses. And the last paragraph of the book reads, but here begins a new account, the account of a man's gradual renewal, the account of his gradual regeneration, his gradual transition from one world to another, his acquaintance with a new, hitherto completely unknown reality. And I think, I, I mean, I know Dostoevsky would be just roll over in his grave if he knew that his book was being compared to an iPhone app. Um, <laughs> But, but I, I personally think that, that something like this could be a form of sort of communal confession. Um, and in that confession, we could also be liberated. We could also find a new reality. We could find a, 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 a place of regeneration. We could promote a new, lean, innovative, clean uh, economy. And, 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 and from that, um, we, could, we could rise up and uh, it, it may sound improbable, but I think that it is eminently possible. Uh, so look for your decal I, uh, iPhone app in the next few years. And, um, and uh, thank you for your time and attention. <laughs>